As someone who plays a lot of fighting games, Virtua Fighter to me has always been a fighting game fan's favorite fighting game. Because the series has a no BS approach to the genre, while somehow always being innovative without losing its soul. There's a real purity to Virtua Fighter, and its simple 3 button control scheme but insanely deep technical gameplay has carried its diehard fanbase for 30 years, with more to come. But anyways, what about Virtua Fighter lore? Look, I know the stories in fighting games get a bad rep, but honestly, I'm a bit of a connoisseur of the dumbness found in the genre's plots, even if most of them just boil down to an evil company running an evil tournament. Which led me to the realization that I somehow didn't know anything about Virtua Fighter's story, except for the fact that Jeffrey's eternal rival was a shark named the Satan Shark, and that every game ends with you fighting the mysterious Tectomo Doral. So I knew goofy things laid underneath the respectable surface of the series. But Virtua Fighter doesn't even give you endings for your character after beating arcade mode, so I had to dig deeper into the series' plots in dumber ways, starting with the CG character portraits. These were real things you could buy in stores for about $10 in Japan for the Sega Saturn that were essentially just images of a character doing things set to an original song. And they're beautiful. And there were 11 of these things. This just kind of shows how ahead of the time Virtua Fighter was with their visuals, because people were willing to dish out money just to look at pictures of the characters. Well, anyways, the CG portraits were charming, but I didn't learn much about Virtua Fighter's plot. Except for... wait a minute. Our main karate boy Akira definitely has some Ryo from Shimu vibes here. And it turns out, that's not a coincidence. Originally, Shinmu was going to be the Virtua Fighter RPG, and it was going to release for the Saturn. But development got moved to the Dreamcast, and it eventually became its own thing entirely. Shinmu still has a lot of connections and references to Virtua Fighter, but it's wild to think that we almost did get a triple A immersive fighting game story RPG, ironically for the fighting game series that doesn't have much of a story to begin with. But this reminded me, there totally was a Virtua Fighter RPG that did get released. It just wasn't what anyone expected, or probably wanted. Enter Virtua Quest, also known as Virtua Fighter Cyber Generation Ambition of Judgment 6 in Japan. It's an action RPG released in 2005 for the PS2 and GameCube, and it's one of the strangest fighting game spin-offs out there, because at first glance, how could anyone even know this is related to Virtua Fighter? But being an RPG, there's a serviceable amount of story here, so in my quest for Virtua Fighter's plot, I logged into this goofy game to see if I could find some data. So Virtua Quest abruptly begins with our main protagonist, Sei, digitizing into a virtual city while someone is yelling at him in a Discord call to find some data chips. Our boy is apparently the data chip hunter, but this is like literally his first time in this virtual world and he doesn't even know what's going on and is surprised by everything, so I'm not sure how he got this job. Anyways. Some robots attack him, but it's all good because he's like Neo and has some martial arts installed in him and we destroy them fast and loot their robot corpses for data chips. So, this is a data chip. After we do that, we're told to log out and see what we got. Rich reveals that we're in a 2000s virtual MMO isekai story, so get ready for all the anime cliches imaginable. So Say logs out of his VR headset, and we meet the voice that was speaking to us in the virtual world, which turns out to be our best friend Hayami who tells us that the data we got sucks, and also exposition dumps onto us that we live in a super powerful island country called Acropolis, and everyone here logs onto the Nexus, which is the ultimate virtual world that is just so cool. And we need to earn money to fix up an airbike by treasure hunting on different virtual servers. We also find out that Sei is the ultimate kid anime protagonist cliche, cause his dad is never home. But Sei's dad is also a super brilliant internet scientist, because he created the glove that Sei is using in the Nexus that lets him use Kung Fu like the Matrix. So after being spoon-fed the setting, Sei is determined to find more data chips, but he needs to get a hunter's license to get access to more dark web servers with better treasure. And even though Sei has an amazing internet dad who builds VR gloves that helps find precious data and an entire VR throne in his room, he acts super surprised to learn all of this because he's our dumb relatable child stand-in. So we log back into the Nexus, and oh my god, this is just Fantasy Star Online. And I'm not complaining about that, 
If anything, Sega should just copy their own god tier aesthetic and put it into everything they make. Legitimately, I really do appreciate much of the virtual world aesthetic of this game, and a lot of the NPCs look absolutely great. Although our main cast does suffer from mid-2000s anime syndrome in design, I think after 20 years, it's become a bit charming. But now we take our Hunter's exam, which doesn't include running 80 kilometers or fighting clowns, but instead teaches you the basics of the game, and you can immediately feel some things that are going to become issues quickly. First of all, Say himself is pretty slow, and everything he can do feels sluggish and clunky, jumping especially. I know Virtua Fighter is a bit infamous with the moon jumps, but honestly, jumping in this game just feels terrible. Attacking can also suck, because there's no enemy lock-on, and if you tack this on with the fact that there's no analog camera controls, fights can become a bit frustrating as you'll see. But credit where credit is due, there's wall running and a grappling hook, and any game that has those gets two thumbs up from me. So we finish our tutorial and get a hunter's license. But Hayami, who somehow logged into the Nexus, even though Sei clearly only has one VR throne in his room, so that just makes me question the whole purpose of the VR throne, tells us that even though we got a hunter's license, our hunter's rank still isn't high enough to download Tor and start going on shady sites, so we gotta kill things and rank up I guess. So we log back into the city we saw at the beginning, and get introduced to our cute mascot companion, Bit. Yeah, they don't really add anything at all to this game, except for telling us when a key or something is nearby. So it's just Sega adding another Omo Chow to their games. But this level introduces us to our main gameplay loop. Levels of Virtua Quest are super linear, and just have you going in straight lines fighting enemies until you find a key to progress. And this really drags at first, cause our moveset is very boring. But we do that for a bit, until running into our next anime cliche, the mysterious blue haired girl. This girl is real standoffish, and tells Say that he needs to log the hell out of the server, and Say is like, oh okay, I guess. But for some reason, he's unable to and he starts bugging out. This causes the blue haired girl to be like, damn, I, I guess they got you, now you gotta fight for your life, and refuses to actually explain what's going on. But does tell Say that to log out, he's gotta defeat the root user of the server, whatever that means. This isn't the best introduction to the internet for Say, but he takes it in stride and goes to beat up more virtual dudes with his downloaded kung fu. But if the mysterious blue haired girl wasn't enough, after that we run into another cliche, the two cool spiky haired glasses guy, who's totally not our dad, right? Come on Say, I know this is your first day on the internet, but like, this is totally your dad's sexy young anime boy avatar, how do you not see this? Anyways, this guy's name is Rod, and he starts speaking mumbo jumbo to Say about unlocking his inner power, and Say brilliantly responds with this. Why is everyone saying stuff like this to me? I just want to get out of here! Yeah, the voice acting is WB Kids tier, and the way the characters are so overly dramatic with their movements and cutscenes honestly reminds me of Food Fight, and I mean that in the most endearing way possible. So Rod gives us a chip that lets us do a synapse break, which is the ability to slow down enemies around you and spam special moves. And it's honestly the coolest thing this game has going for it. Before teleporting away mysteriously, Rod tells us that we also have the ability to awaken virtual souls. And virtual souls are super secret data that are so strong they can destroy the toughest securities and they're so sought after that they're practically mythical. So virtual souls sound very important. I wonder what adventures we're going to go through to find them. Well, one is just like in this ordinary box, like a screen away from that cutscene. So here it is. If you were wondering what the hell any of this has to do with Virtua Fighter, well it turns out Virtua Souls contain the data of various Virtua Fighter characters that can teach us their iconic moves. And yeah, that's kind of it for the most part. You meet a Virtua Fighter character, fight them, and get a move. Rinse and repeat. The Virtua Fighter characters feel more like cameos than crucial additions, and the juxtaposition between the overly anime Sei design and the Virtua Fighter cast really gives off strong bootleg Kingdom Hearts vibes to me. Especially because the Virtua Fighter character models are just straight up ripped from Virtua Fighter 4. But still, these fights were the highlights of the game, because it's just all so goofy seeing a bobblehead anime kid fight a realistic martial artist. Every one of these fights begin with a vague monologue from a Virtua Fighter character about inner strength, and Sage is staring at them with a dumb look on his face. And check it out. 
We actually do get some Virtual Fighter lore dumps from these sometimes. I'm Vanessa. I've been raised by Judgment 6 as a battle machine since I was young. I was rescued from their facility, but Judgment 6 found the man who saved me and... I lost everything. Would you be surprised to learn that this is more than the actual mainline games have given us in terms of story for these characters? Being able to mix and match moves like Akira's shoulder or Jackie's flip kick is awesome. And unsurprisingly, the Virtua Fighter moves you gain are the attacks that really open up the gameplay to let you do cool combos, even though they don't really represent Virtua Fighter in practice. So combat in Virtua Quest is a bit stiff, but the game does let you launch, juggle, and even OTG enemies. With the right moves and the use of Synapse Break, you can get some nice combos going, and once it gets going, I can't deny that it's pretty fun. But okay, that's enough Virtual Fighter in this Virtual Fighter spin-off for a bit. Time for more anime shenanigans. So we found the super secret rare Virtual Soul in a crate. And then we find another one, a few minutes later just sitting in a parking garage. And now I'm starting to think that no one is looking for these things. After killing a bunch of goons in a mall, we end up on the roof where we find the root user and our first boss who is a goofy mech dude with the worst lip syncing you've ever seen. So, you've made it this far. We beat him pretty quickly, and he flips out because we got some virtual souls, and apparently no one is supposed to have any of those. During this altercation, we're being watched by some obviously evil dude, and now we can log out the server. We end up seeing Hayami again, and we tell him about the virtual souls, and he tells us that those are totally made up because no one has found any even though you could probably find some on any street corner, but also explains that Virtua Souls are the data recorded from a martial arts tournament from the 20th century. Yeah. Look, I'm accepting of that fact, but it's just really funny to me that this super powerful data is just some recordings of semi-believable martial arts. It's not like the lost technique of throwing a fireball or something, it's just footage of a dude doing a dropkick that's so scary and rare. But yeah, Hayami ditches us again, and we run into some other hunters and eavesdrop on their conversation to get the address to another server that's apparently very weird and hidden. Which brings us to the second level. And immediately, I was dreading this, because it reminded me of the Tarzan world from Kingdom Hearts 1, and I can't stand that place. But it wasn't that bad. This is probably the most forgettable level of the game. You just kind of do some light swinging around and fight some enemies until you run into our next cliche, the super badass silent guy who's too cool and isn't afraid of anything. I've literally killed like 50 of these jobbers already, so I'm not so sure why this is supposed to be impressive. Anyways, we get to the boss, and it's three dorks that we beat easily, and they tell us that as long as we have Virtual Souls, people are going to come after us. We lock out of the jungle, and we run into someone trying to tell others that hunters are being abducted on the internet, and they don't believe them. Check out this exaggerated little kick he does. I love it. We go check up on him, and he tells us that the kidnappers are on some old BBS site for a construction company. Which honestly I think is really neat, and I wish all the servers we visit in this game had some sort of in-game explanation like that. But before we can go off to the server, Hayami logs back in to tell us that there's no way anything nefarious is even going on. Even though 100 people have tried to beat Sei's ass since he logged on this morning. But our good boy Sei decides to go check out the construction server anyways. And man, this is when I wanted to quit because a lot of the game's issues were irking me. Virtua Quest is just so slow and doesn't mind wasting your time. Levels sprawl, there's unnecessary padding all over the place, and the platforming sucks. It also doesn't help that this was the level I decided to play for my first stream on YouTube, and the stream was cursed as hell. Just cause... Oh shit, my fire alarm is going off. But we power through anyways and eventually run into the mysterious blue haired girl who tells us that her name is Toka. And we ask her why no one seems to notice that people are just trying to kill us anytime we log into a server, and she tells us that we need evidence of it. Honestly, I don't even know what the hell that means, because I don't think it's much of a secret. But then again, these people can't find virtual souls in plain sight. So... After that, we gotta save Toka and have a battle royale in front of a Sonic statue, which is probably the sickest thing in this game so far. After that, we eventually get to the ninja boss's level, who tells us that he's been waiting here to beat our ass. But we knock him out, and get hit with the ultimate philosophical question in return. Toka, why... 
Why are we fighting? Toka tells us that we gotta fight this group called Judgment Six, cause they're bad and we're good. And honestly, that's all the explanation we need, so we log out. This is our other Virtual Fighter reference, cause Judgment Six are the evil organizations from the main games who created Doral. So I'm assuming that no one in the Virtual Fighter timeline was able to stop them, cause this takes place probably a hundred years later. Good job, Jackie. So we beat the level and log out again. And see, Toka and definitely not our dad talk about how we're the chosen one. Which is funny, cause when we get back to the main Nexus server, Hayami starts telling us that this whole Judgment 6 internet terrorist stuff is stupid. Cause this is just a virtual world, and whatever they're up to can't affect anyone in the real world. He also tells us that he found a virtual soul, which, again, doesn't surprise me, they're everywhere. And that he's gonna hide it in the next server for us. And like, dude, the entire reason we're even online is to make money, so just sell it. But Sei has no backbone, and I guess we gotta go to the Ancient Japan server to find it. This is probably my favorite level in Virtua Quest, cause I think at this point in the game, you're the most balanced alongside the enemies. So every battle feels nice, and there's no annoying time-wasting gimmicks here. And also, the music in this stage rules. I haven't talked about it yet, but it should come to no surprise that a Sega soundtrack is good, and has a nice mix of original and Virtua Fighter songs. We eventually find Hayami hiding the Virtual Soul, but he gets kidnapped by Judgment 6, so we gotta whoop someone else who's a little bit too into it. What a rush! My whole body is tingling. Man, what's up with those freaks? Now Hayami totally believes us about the internet terrorist, and he tells us that he's gonna go investigate them. After logging off the server, we see the mysterious badass steal some server address, so of course we follow him. This leads us to some port server, and seriously, we just left a construction site not too long ago. We're in the internet. Where are the wacky cool levels? So this level is absolutely boring to me, but it's not annoying. Which is honestly a trait that's a little more important to me right now. We eventually run into the badass dude who tells us that his name is Shat. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not making that up. He tells us that he's here to take down Judgment 6, because they've done some internet crimes. And he also drops the bombshell on us that Toka is a double agent who pretended to help him get evidence against Judgment 6 before but betrayed him and got his partner murked in the process. Cause apparently, if you die in the game, you turn into a vegetable in real life. But only if you log in without backup data. Which is a strange turn because none of the main characters or bad guys have talked about having backup data before. So like, is every bad guy just able to log back in after I beat them? Does anything I accomplish even matter? Do I have backup data? Am I gonna die? But anyways. The Sephiroth wannabe who was spying on us earlier shows up out of nowhere to bust this exposition dump, and Shat tells us to get out of here, cause this is his battle. So we dip, only to have to fight like a giant mech a screen away. I think I'd much rather fight those jobbers and the big evil bad guy out there with Shat, but we take on the robot anyways, and afterwards, Sei has his anime mind break moment. Just what, what is the meaning of all this? only to be consoled by his totally not dad, being vague as always. After logging out, Hayami tells us that he knows where a missing hunter is at, but Sei starts being all emo and passive aggressive about being on the internet, until he's persuaded to help once he realizes that the missing hunter is this girl's brother, so we're off onto another server. Now this is the worst level in the entire game, the Taifong Ruins. This place wants to be an Ocarina of Time temple so bad, but this game is so shallow that any attempts at puzzles feels like a waste of time, cause there's no interesting mechanics to play with. Hitting a switch 20 times and walking in water that makes you even slower just isn't fun. But hey, there's a cool section of the level that has carvings of Virtual Fighter characters on the wall. So that's cool I guess. This is also about the time I just said whatever and started skipping any encounter I could, cause there was no fun to be had fighting them. Eventually we find the missing hunter, who is being attacked by just some dude. Every boss so far has had this out there anime design, and now there's just a guy here ready to beat our ass. This boss is at least interesting because we have an AI partner helping us, even if I don't think he really does anything. After defeating the boss, Sei questions the intentions of Judgment 6, 
and he tells us figure things out for yourself <laughs> which i mean yeah that's kind of what we've been doing this whole game because everyone is vague and annoying anyways we find out that judgment six is kidnapping hunters and controlling them to hurt others but i don't get it these are people who are just in a vr headset at the end of the day even if they're being brainwashed they gotta go eat and go to the bathroom at some point right are they controlling them outside of the headset too how long can you really have an army of people just sitting in their room online? Even Hayami says if you're stuck you could just force yourself offline by turning off the VR headset. But whatever. We deliver the brother back to the sister. And now we gotta go to a server that a lot of hunters are suspiciously logging into. Which turns out to just be the streets of Hong Kong. And you know, I don't blame them. This is where I would spend my time in VR too. This level is literally just walking in a straight line. So it has one of the better stage designs in the game. And you even get to fight goons on top of vans. So that's cool. We run into Toka and the evil guy. Who tells her that it's awesome that she keeps bringing hunters to him. And she's like, no. So Sei steps in to save his e-girl he met a few hours ago. But is knocked out by Shat. Who's got a tan now. And following Japanese fighting game logic. Having a tan apparently means you're evil. So we wake up to have an epic showdown with Shat, and this dude is a pushover. All you gotta do is let himself tire himself out and then spam on him. When he loses, he tells us that he's gonna be forcibly logged out, which is not a bad thing. I mean his partner's literally in the hospital, so I think he's got the better end of the deal here. But he also tells us that Judgment 6 is gonna hack into the Acropolis main server with all their controlled hunters, and they plan on sinking the island they live on. Which is pretty gnarly all things considered. I really don't know how this benefits Judgment 6, but I guess we all do a little trolling sometimes. So Shat now gets to go outside and hang out with his loved ones or something, while this 10 year old saves the entire country. And wait a minute, why can't Shat just log back in? This dude sucks. I know I'm trying too hard to make sense of a children's game, but thankfully we're in the end game now. We meet up with Hayami who tells us that Judgment 6 is already attacking the Acropolis main server and then we gotta go stop them with our virtual souls. So let's start this last level. And of course it's an endurance run. And this would have been fine. Except that there's a part where you gotta fight old bosses again. Which was pretty easy. Until I had the hardest time against the regular ass guy from the temple level. He has enemies spawned with him. But without another NPC on your side to distract the goons, this fight just becomes so annoying. But eventually we beat him, and make our way to our final obstacle before the last boss. Which is just a random barrier thing. It feels like someone had this idea last minute and couldn't let it go to waste, so they threw it in here. It's mad random and annoying, but we clear it and make it to the big bad with Toka. And to no one's surprise, Toka is actually Doral from Virtua Fighter. And we gotta have an epic and sad anime battle with her. Which ends with Sei holding Toka in his arms as she's logged out of the Nexus. Which, again, like what's bad about this? She's not dead. But it's final boss time now. Toka! <clears throat> as the island we live on starts to flood, we get to have our one-on-one -on -one with the off-brand Sephiroth. And sadly, this dude is a pushover in a bad way. He gets a neat demon form in his second phase, but the boss is just way too easy for all the trouble I just went through. So after that not so climactic battle, Sei goes to stop the flooding and dunks on him one last time, forcing him to log out. And after he gets out of the Nexus, I guess he can just continue being a terrorist in real life, cause I don't know what this solved. Sei tries to stop the flooding, but remember, this is like his first day on the internet. How the hell is he supposed to manage this? But thankfully, Say's dad shows up. Wow! Say's dad starts to work on the flood issue, but also tells us that he worked for Judgment 6, but didn't realize they were internet terrorists until it was too late. He gave us the hunter's glove that can use virtual souls so we could clean up his mess while he was hiding, which is a terrible plan. Say didn't know anything about the Nexus, and also how does pretending to be some mysterious vague guy help this mission when he knew that the world was at stake? Well, Sei's dad decides to sacrifice himself by switching the crashing server's command functions to a different server at the last second. And at this point, I really don't care if that makes sense, cause it saves the day. 
Even though this is probably the most father-son bonding time Sei has had in a while, Sei's dad also forces Sei to log out as the server's crashing. Sei finally gets out of his VR headset, and he tells Hayami that they gotta go find his dad somewhere in the Nexus. Damn man, slow down. You literally, like, just saved an entire country. But this does lead to a cute epilogue of Sei looking for his dad, and Toka, who is revealed to be recovering in the hospital. And that's the end. So many questions. I know I sound like a broken record, but why does everyone act like logging out equals death? Everyone is fine. Even the bad guys. Except for Shat's friend who is rolling around without backup data, which honestly sounds very dumb knowing the consequences, especially because no one else made this mistake. And also, why can't Sei's dad just come home now? Why are we looking for him and Toka in the Nexus? I mean, we literally see that Toka's out of the internet. And where are Toka's parents? Judgment 6 was creating internet child soldiers, and after Sei beat her ass, they just took her to the hospital? And also, the Virtual Souls were said to be the ultimate weapon to take down the Acropolis main server, but the bad guys never used them. They just brainwashed a bunch of people to DDoS the server. And did we ever get enough money to fix our airbike, which was the entire reason we were even on the internet in the first place? <sighs> who cares? You know, Virtua Quest is a weird game. I didn't enjoy like 80% of it, but I wouldn't say it's a bad game. Honestly, I think if I was like 8 years old, I'd probably think this is the coolest game ever. It hits a very comfy spot of nostalgia that made me realize that we're just never going to get weird experimental B games like this ever again. I think the game probably felt dated, even back then, but I'm glad it exists, because it's just weird. But again, why was this a Virtua Fighter game? This contained like 3% Virtua Fighter, and it was all forced in. But the sad part is that the goofy 3% of Virtua Fighter that this game contains is still somehow more than what the actual games give. So I guess in the end, Virtua Quest was worth playing for my Virtua Fighter lore needs. But I probably should have just read the manuals or watched the anime or something. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>